verses also so I have uh, made a point to put other the verses other than from uh, leviticus 23 almost almost all the verses are there so that you don't have to just flip over so for now you can open your bibles to leviticus chapter 23 so i will start reading from verse uh, 2 onwards speak to the children of israel and say to them the feasts of the lord which you shall proclaim to be holy convocation these are my feasts so point number one is this is not some jewish feast lord is saying that the, these are my feast so these are the feasts of the lord so the hebrew word for feast is moed so which is translated as feast but actual meaning it is not feast it means appointed time and convocation here the word convocation here is in hebrew it is mikra in hebrew which means rehearsal so rehearsal why do we do some rehearsal because we need when the important event is happening we rehearse something so that when the actual event is going to happen that we are ready so these are two words which we need to know holy convocation and it is an appointed time so this entire chapter if you go through this entire chapter one after other you see all these feasts that are list one after the other so why are we studying this so throughout this entire session we'll be we'll be seeing what god is saying in this chapter and what are the israelites doing about this and why are we sitting in this point of time why are we studying this and why should we know this so next slide please so we are going to study this because of this reason colossians chapter 2 verse 16 and 17 says therefore do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival a new moon celebration or a sabbath day these are a shadow of things things that we uh, that were to come the reality however is found in christ so this is a very tricky verse because it actually says that we are not supposed to judge a person of what he eats and what sabbath he keeps or what uh, uh, tradition he follows we are not supposed to judge him because he will be doing that to as a memorial of something or uh, something which is supposed to come in the future so shadow if you see that it is cast by something uh, when a light is reflecting through something which is real only then a shadow is a shadow is cast so these are shadows which is pointing to someone who is real who is our lord jesus christ the messiah so today uh, we when we learn about these feasts how they are done and all the significance and also when we study this chapter 23 the first thing god starts before even going into the feast he speaks about the sabbath and he also talks about uh, these all the holidays are called as high holy sabbath which means that they there, there should be no work which is done and where the people are gathered in a place and where they are remembering certain things and they are celebrating certain things so next slide so we can uh, categorize the seven feasts into two broad categories spring feasts and fall feasts so these are the first four are called as a spring feast which is which is happening during the spring time in israel and the next three is happening during the autumn or the fall time uh, in israel so uh, next uh, next one so the first one is the feast of passover or pesach so in uh, Leviticus chapter 23, verse 5, on the 14th day of the first month at twilight is the Lord's Passover. So it is on the 14th of the first Jewish month, which is, which is the month of Nisan. So which is for us, it will be somewhere around April, uh, late April or in the first two weeks of, uh, sorry, late uh, March and or the first two weeks of April, somewhere around the Easter time so uh, what do the israelites do so lord gave this instructions of uh, passover in the land of egypt when they had already seen all the nine uh, plagues have gone through and just before the 10th plague that is uh, uh, the the firstborn where god is uh, judging is uh, egyptians with the firstborn so that is when this uh, god is giving this instruction so in Exodus chapter 12, there is a clear cut uh, instruction as to how this has to be done. So on 10th of Nisan, they select a lamb, a one year old lamb. Why a one year old lamb? So a, uh, in a sheep, for a sheep, a sheep is fully mature when it is one year old. So they take a one year old 
lamb, which means they take an adult lamb and which is without blemish. And they, what they do is they set apart, they keep it aside for this purpose. And on 14th of Nizan, which is after the uh, three days or the fourth day on 14th of Nizan, they take and they kill the lamb and verse seven in chapter 12, Exodus, it says that, and they shall take some of the blood and put it on the doorpost and on the lentil, lentil, of, uh, lentil of the house where they eat it. They roast the lamb and they, lamb and they eat it. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night roasted in fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. So this is actually this uh, seven, uh, when I said I'm going to take a session on uh, seven feasts, my Hebrew teacher was saying, how can you complete it within 45 minutes or 50 minutes? Because it is, it is little, uh, not, uh, not possible, but then uh, I'll try to make it very short because each and everything is a complete deep study which is happening. So even each and every element which they are following, uh, following is, has certain meaning to it. So what are they doing? Moses and the elders were asked to apply the blood. They slaughter the lamb, they take the blood and they sprinkle, they apply it on the, the front of the door, the, the lintel and on the sides of the door and they stay inside the homes and they don't come out on that day. So in Exodus chapter 12 verse 13, now the blood, now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be on to you to destroy you And when I strike the land of Egypt. The Hebrew word Pesach, which means that, which is translated as Passover means that it is an action of skipping over or hopping in very, in a hasty way. So, which means that when, when this is happening, the Lord will skip over. God, Lord will pass over. He will. He will. Uh, he won't uh, uh, trouble the, la the the houses which have these uh, blood spots over them. He will skip over those houses and will destroy the firstborn of the in the houses where the blood is not there. The next slide. Yeah. So uh, Matthew twenty six uh, verse twenty six to twenty eight. Uh, Sister uh, Anju was take, talking about this mostly. So, and they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So, uh, yeah, I purposely put this picture because I didn't want to put that uh, Darwin C uh, drawing because that is not usually how they sit in a straight line. This is how they sit. They sit in an inclined position, in a more relaxed position they sit. And that is why they wash their legs because they are sitting down. So each person will be sitting so close. So that is why they wash their legs. That is a procedure which has been fo followed. And we see there is so many things which is happening over the ta table. Uh, Jesus is washing the feet of the disciples. Then he is telling that he is going to be betrayed. And he's talking about the Peter's denial. So there are so many things which is happening during that time. And on the table also, there are so many elements which are kept on the table. They have this bread, this Passover bread they have, and they have this roasted uh, lamb. And uh, this uh, Passover bread is not something like a bun or a bread which we have. It is something like a naan bread. It's a flat bread. So it, uh, then they have this bitter herbs. Then they have juices of uh, oranges and uh, dates. Each one has a different meaning to it. And uh, Jesus is, so what we are trying to say is, uh, Jesus is this one lamb without blemish, a uh, one lamb for every household. And he is sinless and he is set apart. The lamb was eaten with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. So each time we study the word of God, we partake of the manna which is there for us. And each time we partake of the stable, we partake of his body and his blood and the bitter uh, herbs represent the persecutions of uh, per persecution which we face on a day-to-day -day ba basis. Uh, yes, we, we face even now. So uh, for Israel, it was the bitter past which they had, which they lived their life in Egypt. So they had to do that because it is a reminder for them that uh, they, they are coming out of their bitter past. So in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13 says, uh, says that, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far, uh, far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So Jesus is our Passover lamb 
and whose blood is uh, is uh, is because of his blood we are spared from death and jesus is was crucified on the day of passover so next so the second uh, yeah the second feast is the unleavened bread or in hebrew it is called as matzot so in uh, yeah leviticus chapter 23 verse 6 and on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread to the lord seven days you must eat the unleavened bread so the feast it's a it's a week feast it's a for the peak feast for seven days and it starts on 15th of nisan so it goes out till uh, 21st of nisan so the first uh, day and the last day are holy sabbath day so day, it's a day of rest and wh- why uh, god specifically says that there is no there shouldn't be any leaven in the bread so there are two there, there were two major reasons is one is a practical reason because egypt uh, from egypt the people were going out in a hurry so which means that they didn't have time to wait so that the leaven will be formed on the bread which they are making so uh, leaven is uh, somehow we somehow we take it as a process where we put a lot of yeast in that and the dough will rise not just uh, putting an yeast and raising the flour it happens when you keep the flour in outside in a room temperature it happens like your normal idli batter it rises even without putting any uh, yeast to it so that is the process so the outer atmosphere of the egyptians the the egyptian culture and their false god and all their culture on all their practices it had affected a lot on the israelite it had an effect on them so god is telling them to leave the leaven outside and they has asked them to have a bread without leaven which means that they are supposed to leave all that culture outside and they are supposed to start afresh so that is that was the idea when god said there is no leaven and but for us it is leaven it also means that there are certain qualities undesirable qualities which can be equated for instance the leaven of herod in uh, mark chapter 8 says that it's it represents pride and uh, pharisees we know it is hypocrisy so so like how the israelites were asked to leave their past behind and similarly we are supposed to leave all the undesirable qualities to god so what did the israelites do on that day exodus chapter 12 verse 19 for 7 days no leaven shall be found in your houses and who since whoever eats what is leaven the same person shall be cut off from the congregation of israel whether he is a stranger or a native of the land so even to to this day the preparation for passover starts before a month they do a thorough cleaning of the houses they go to each and every room and every nook and corner they check if there is any leaven which is left and they use a light a lamp to they light a lamp and they just go searching for it so uh, so this is a very tedious process for them and spiritually also because we have a leaven hidden in the deeper corners of our heart so we need the light of god's word to expose the leaven or the sin or any undesirable qualities which we have uh, needs to be exposed so that is the spiritual meaning of this so next slide so here in uh, john chapter 6 verse 58 jesus is referring to himself he is saying that this is the bread which came down from heaven not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead he who eats this bread will live forever so he is the unleavened bread the bread that gives us life so next so that we come to the third feast which is the feast of the first fruits which is called as habikurim in hebrew so it falls on 16th of nisan the second day of the feast of the unleavened bread so in leviticus chapter 10 uh, uh, 23 verses 10 and 11 speak to the children of israel and say to them when you come into the land which i give you and reap its harvest then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest he shall wave the sh- uh, sheaf before the lord to be accepted on your behalf on the day after the sabbath the priest shall wave it so the first feast of the first fruits marked the beginning of the barley harvest 
So all the fruits of uh, the first fruits belong to the Lord and uh, it includes grains and fruits and even the flock and even the firstborn sons were belong to the belong to the Lord. So chapter Genesis, uh, sorry, in Genesis chapter four, we see uh, Cain, Cain and Abel, they are offering the uh, offering and Abel is giving his first fruits. So God is uh, taking it and he's respecting uh, Abel's uh, sacrifice. So what did Israelites do on that day? So the congregation, what they do is they bring their first fruits to the temple or the tabernacle and the uh, priest would take a sheaf of the grains and he would wave it. And this, they do this, they do this first fruit offering as an anticipation for a plenty of harvest, which is, uh, which, which would happen throughout the year. So that is the, that is the belief that they have that they offer the first fruits to the Lord so that he will bless their land for the plentiful. So the first born male lamb also is offered as a first fruit offering. It is done for, as a burnt offering. So why is it important to us? Next slide. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 18, and he is the head of the body, the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that, that in all things he may have a preeminence. So Jesus rose from the dead on the first fruits, on the feast of the first fruits, and he is the sheep of the first fruits, which is accept, acceptable to God the Father. So in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 20 and 21 says like this, it, he indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who through, uh, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. So like the feast of uh, the first fruits, the resurrection of uh, Jesus Christ also proves that the Harvest is going to be plentiful. Harvest meaning the resurrection of the saints in Jesus. So he is our hope of our, uh, he is the hope of our resurrection. So after this three feasts, what happens is counting of something called as counting of Omer happens. So which uh, it is in Leviticus chapter 23 verse 15. And you shall count for yourself from the day after Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be completed. So Omer in Hebrew is, means a sheaf of grain. So in they, after this day, they count, after the first, uh, first fruits, they count 49 days or seven weeks, seven Sabbaths they count and comes the 50th day, day, which they celebrate as Pentecost. So why do we count days or why do we have a countdown? So we have a countdown because we have some exciting announcement to be made. You can see all these functions or something which they are going to announce, they have this countdown. Or uh, uh, for instance, uh, my child, Sam, he, uh, before his birthday is coming, he'll be, he'll be counting. He'll be saying 15 days more, ma. he'll be saying 10 days more, all that. So something which excites you, that is why, that is when you start counting the days. So, so that is what, when uh, God was asking them to count 50, 50 days, the first time when he asked to do it, he had something very big to announce on day 50. In the, um, uh, because that time they were in the wilderness and on day 50, something great was happening is what's going to happen. And that is why God had asked them to count it. So the fourth of uh, yeah the fourth feast is the feast of Pentecost or Shavuot. So uh, it is also called yeah we it is also called as a feast of weeks. So it is uh, celebrated in the Jewish month of Sivan. So it is for us it is uh, early uh, late May or early June every year. So in Leviticus chapter twenty three verse seventeen you shall bring from your dwellings two wave loaves of two tenths of an ephah. Then shall be uh, they shall be of a fine flour. They shall be baked with leaven. The uh, they are the first fruits to the Lord. So the uh, feast of Pentecost began with the intention of a uh, harvest festival, and it was. But right now it is more significant because what something happened on that day for the first time is when it is on that day at Mount Sinai uh, they were given the law. So that is that is why it is even more important on that day. So what do uh, Israelites basically do on that day is they bring these two loaves of bread using wheat, wheat and leaven. 
So earlier we saw that they were God specifically asked them to eat bread without leaven, and here he, God is asking them to bring the wheat bread with leaven. So why is this happening? So the first time uh, in the unleavened bread, the unleavened uh, bread was represented Yeshua, represented Jesus, and here wheat represents the children of God, Israel. Or even it can represent us also as children of God. So wheat is mixed with leaven. So though we call us as a set apart crowd and all that, God still sees us with leaven. Leaven is all, always there with us. So there is always scope for improvement. So that is why they are bringing the bread with the leaven to say, and God is accepting that. That is the, the best part of it. So why is it important to us? Next slide. So Acts chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, so we are all excited to read this chapter 2 in Acts because it is, it is one important event which happened on that day. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. In verse 41, we see then those who gladly received his word were baptized and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. So in, uh, uh, just as I told on uh, the first Pentecost, what happened was God gave them the law and we see when God, when Moses is having these two tablets, he is bringing down the Ten Commandments. So we see the golden calf incident is happening out, out there. And we see because of God's wrath, 300, 3,000 people were killed due to that sin of theirs. But here we see 3,000 were added to the house of God. So that is how, that is because we are in the time of grace and because of the Holy Spirit, we have a helper and all that. And uh, so... So that is what, that is a good sign which happened at the beginning of the church that 3,000 people were added to the house of God. And with this, we come to the end of the spring feast. And uh, this all, this all first four uh, feast denote, which points out to the Lord's first coming. And next we have the fall feast, which are there. So next slide. Feast of Trumpets or Yom Teruah, also known as Ro Rosh Hashanah. So it falls on the first day of the Hebrew month, Tishri, which is sometime for us, it will be somewhere around September. So in the month, the month Tishri is from there only it's just the civil calendar of Israel starts. So Rosh Hashanah is also known as it's a New Year time for Jewish New Year time for them. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 24. Speak to the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have Sabbath rest, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. So Jewish people, we all know, they blow trumpets for, uh, for many occasions they blow. They blow the ram's horn, uh, especially during this uh, feast. And even a month before that also, they they keep blowing for at various intervals they do that and on this day they blow the last trumpet uh, denoting it is the feast of trumpets so in tr trumpets we uh, the especially the ram's horn has a major significance because uh, at the time of akeda at the time of uh, abraham binding isaac so uh, when Isaac, when God asks uh, to uh, Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, he is, uh, Abraham is taking him and he's uh, about to sacrifice. And you know, we all know what happened during that time. God is giving them a ram and it's the horn is being caught in the bush. So that ram's horn is very special. It's a reminder for them to, when they blow that, they get reminded of their father, Abraham, and they re get reminded of the promise that God made to Abraham in uh, Genesis. So in the book of Joshua, also we see that the wall of Jericho comes, collapses down after seven days of blowing trumpets and the shouting of the people. So the trumpet is, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a way, it's a 
blown in different way to denote certain things. In the wilderness, when it is blown, it is in a certain way, it says that it is time for us to pack up and leave. And in some places, in, in, a, in a place of battle, if it is blown in a certain way, it says that they have won the battle or certain things. So what do they do? What do the Israelites do on that day, even to this day? So the, as I told earlier, the preparation starts 30 days before this, this specific day. So it, for them, it is a time of repentance and the reading of Torah. They, they read the uh, scriptures during that, uh, that time. They reflect on their lives. They just see, they ask God for his mercy. And uh, they, it's a time of repentance, actually. It is a time for a deep repentance for them. And on that day, they assemble in the, in the congregation to do certain offerings to the Lord. So, uh, and uh, this being the Rosh Hashanah, the New Year, Jewish New Year, they, what they do is they, obviously they take a resolution for the coming year. So why is it important for us? Next, next slide. So 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, verse 51 to 50, 52. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Verse 57, but thanks to be, uh, be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So this verse, we all know it points to rapture. So, so we, at, as believers, obviously we don't have to blow trumpets, but at least we should know what this uh, signifies. So at least we should be, uh, be prepared, keep ourselves ready for the day to come. So, um, so from, the, from this day to the next uh, feast, there are about 10 days. So these 10 days are called as the days of awe, A-W-E, days of awe, which means that they do a complete retrospection of their lives. They see in, uh, in their walk with God, how far they are, or they are, if they have committed any sin, they ask for forgiveness. And it's a deep uh, time for a deep, uh, what do you say, uh, to check, to do a re retrospection. And because the day of atonement is coming, the day of judgment is coming. So all, all, all they do is they do a proper uh, reconciliation with God during these 10 days. So after in the future also, after rapture, what will happen is before the day of judgment is this time of complete chaos because uh, for the Jewish uh, people, especially because, uh, um, uh, because the church is already taken in rapture and uh, these people, they don't know what to do because, uh, uh, because of all the persecution which is happening, the great tribulation, there will be God's wrath which is happening at that time. So all these, it will be a very chaotic time which is uh, spiritually denotes this 10 days. Uh, not exactly, it won't be for 10 days, uh, as you know. So it denotes this period. Next slide. Next slide, we go to the feast, yeah, the Day of Atonement or Yom Kippur. So this is on the 10th of the month of Tishri, which is uh, again end of September or beginning of October. So Yom means day in uh, Hebrew, and Kippur comes from the Hebrew word kapar, which means to atone or to cover. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 27 and 28. Also, the 10th day of the seventh month shall be a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation for you. You shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by the Lord, and you shall do no work on the same day, for it is the day of atonement to make atonement for you before the Lord your God. So God's judgment, we know that it is there from the very beginning in uh, the days of Noah also uh, itself. We know that how God judged the earth. So, uh, so in spite of judgment, in spite of all that, the saving grace which Noah had, we all know that Noah and his family were saved. So what do the Israelites, they do on this day? So we saw earlier in the days of awe, they humble themselves, they, they afflict their souls because, uh, because God hates pride and affliction of souls means that it is something which is, uh, which is internal. You don't, have, you don't have to show it outwardly. It is not super, something which is superficial, but it is something from internal. So as, uh, and God lists a list of things for the high priest to do on that day. So we see this in chapter, Leviticus chapter 16. 
so a bull is sacrificed for the uh, for the sins of the uh, of the high priest and his household so the high priest also is sinful also he also needs redemption he also needs atonement so a bull is sacrificed for his purpose and the two male goats are given as a sin, sin offering for the congregation so uh, so what the high priest will do is he'll bring these two uh, two male goats he'll bring and what they'll cast lots and one goat is called as la adonai which is to the lord and another one is called as la azaziel which is the scapegoat so the la adonai is killed and the uh, the blood is taken inside the holy of holies and it's uh, uh, sprinkled on the mercy seat and this is how the atonement of sin is made and the scapegoat is left free into the wilderness and which is eventually pushed from a, a cliff so it represents the scapegoat represents uh, the satan and uh, that action of pushing from the the cliff it denotes it that he is going to be pushed into the lake of fire so why is it important to us so slide so in hebrews i put the entire portion here so hebrews chapter 9 verse 11 to 14 but jesus but christ came as a high priest of the good things to come with a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is not of his creation not with the blood of goats and calves but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all having obtained eternal redemption for if the blood of the bulls and goats and the ashes of a heap sprinkled the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of own flesh how much more shall the blood of christ through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to god cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living god next so we come to the last feast which is the feast of the tabernacles which is also called as sukkot so this this is again a seven day it's a week old feast which starts on the 15th of the month of tishri which is october so it uh, it uh, god is uh, this is uh, told in verse 23 leviticus 23 verse 34 speak to the children of israel saying the 15th day of the 17th uh, so, sorry seventh month shall be the feast of the tabernacles for seven days for the lord so this feast was in remembrance of their the entire journey of wilderness which they had go go through and what they do is in in the wilderness they didn't build a temporary they only built temporary structures they didn't have any permanent homes over there it was only temporary structures and uh, the, the and sukha means the word sukkot comes from the hebrew word sukha which means the cloud of glory so they had this cloud which that was guiding them so they built these temp temporary structures over the cloud uh, close to the cloud and where wherever the cloud is sparking they then they will uh, do uh, they'll build a temporary structure and they'll dwell there so unlike the earlier feast the day, day of atonement this is the feast of joy they have a lot of celebration for uh, during this time because it shows their relationship with god it shows god's protection how they were protected and how they were moving out from slavery from egypt and how god was uh, taking them forth so what uh, the israelites do on this day so even now to this day they build this uh, temporary uh, tents like this they build uh, tents like this during the feast and uh, as you see the roof is not fully done the roof they'll have all these gaps so that when they stay down they can see the sky they can see the stars clouds everything they can see so that is a constant reminder of how they were in the wilderness how god's protection was there, uh, there and how the relationship it, uh, is with god who is above so this and apart from this they follow this amazing tradition it's like amazing tradition which is there in deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 12 uh, which they do at the uh, the feast of tabernacles so gather the people god is saying to them gather the people men women and the little ones and the stranger stranger which is us the gentiles who is within your gates and they may hear and they may learn to fear the Lord your God and carefully observe all the words of this law. So for this feast, I don't know for, about the other feast, but at least for this feast, they include Gentiles in the assembly. So uh, wherever they gather to celebrate. 
So they believe that if the Messiah, suppose if he's coming on this day when they are having this uh, festival, and if the Messiah is asking where is a stranger and, uh, or where is this Gentile, they need to show somebody. So that is why they, 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 mono, they meticulously they do this. They include Gentiles also during this time. So, so God, we know that God so loves the world and he is the God of Israel is God, the Lord God of us all. Next slide. So again, uh, during the second temple time, there was another uh, ceremony which was, fall, uh, which was followed during the Feast of Tabernacles, which is a uh, water libation ceremony. It uh, happens that uh, the, the priest during that time, they, they come to the water, uh, the pool of Shilom, they, they take water from there and they go and pour it to the bronze altar, which is there in the temple. Uh, they pour that and they, they do the ritual. So this was uh, practiced during the time of Jesus also. So the priest and the elders, what they do is they, they go in singing, they sing Psalms, they go, they play music and they go out and they, they fetch water. And it was during that time, Jesus is going and standing in front of them and he say, this was in John chapter seven, verse 37. On the last day, the great day of feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. So this is a good news in a nutshell. What he's saying, what Jesus is saying is, if anyone, if anyone means it, uh, it is there, the message is there for all. So if anyone thirsts, thirsts, which means that if, if you realize that, that, that you are thirsty, you are in need. So come to me. Come to me means he is inviting each one of them personally and drink. Drink means it's a personal action which we are supposed to do. So the first thing is that we should know that we are, uh, we are thirsty and uh, we should walk towards him and do the action of drinking. Only then, if you do not, if you do not seek, we won't find him. So only the action comes from us, though he's doing the invitation part. So this feast, this feast of resting, this feast of dwelling in the, in the booths, it represents the millennial kingdom. In Zechariah, in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16, and it shall come to pass that everyone who is left of all the nations will come again, which came against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. So it speaks about the Feast of Tabernacles, which will be celebrated in the Millennial Kingdom. Next slide. Revelation chapter 21, verse 3. And I heard, John is saying this, I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. So he is a Lord who wants to dwell, who wanted to tabernacle with his people from the beginning and even to the end. So with this, we come to the um, end of all the feasts, which we come, uh, we come to the end. And uh, as I said, there are two broad categories of the feast, the spring feast and the fall feasts. So the first four are over and we are waiting for the next three fall, fall feasts, which represents the second coming. So where are we right now? We are in between these two feasts and this being the entire, we are just before the Feast of Trumpets, which is uh, we are waiting for the last trumpet call and we are spiritually in the month of Elul. Next, in the Hebrew month of, in the Jewish month of Elul we are. So what is so special about this month? So as I told earlier before, uh, the, uh, there will be a 30 month, uh, sorry, a 30 day of uh, uh, spiritual uh, or cleansing and all the introspection will happen the ten, uh, for 30 days before the day of uh, Yom Tiruva, before the day of the trumpets, I said. So that 30 days is the month of Elul. And apart from that, apart when the people are doing all this introspection and when they are doing all this dedication and repentance, the, there is one more significance is that they say this month is when the king is in the field. So we all know that common people, they cannot just go and meet the king any 
any uh, time they like they need to cert pros follow certain protocols they need to be dressed in a certain way and all that but this is the time when the king he leaves his kingdom and he comes and camps near his people so that even the common man can easily approach him and speak to him and they can tell their specific need and all that so all that will be fulfilled during this point of time so what is what is so special for us in that is that we have a king is a, not just a king he is the king of kings who left all that kingdom and he came down and he is tabernacled with us he is there with us and who is he he who will take care of who will redeem us who has redeemed us from all slavery and all kinds of sin so is the king there, there in the field now yes he is there is he approachable yes he is approachable how far is he he is just one prayer away he is there so in isaiah chapter 55 verse 6 says that seek the lord while he may be found call upon him while he is near so because when he is going to come back again he is going to come back as a judge and it would not be the right time to approach him because it's it will be too late by then so we are in the time of preparation and uh, so let us seek him so diligently yes the the field is not like a uh, uh, garden of eden of course we are in the wilderness and um, and more more it will be like even like a battlefield but the only saving grace is the king is in the field hallelujah let's pray father god thank you lord god for this time a lord god thank you lord god that uh, that you been uh, teaching your people a lot god you've been telling certain things a lot from the beginning a lot from the beginning of your bible lord god you the each and every verse a lot god points to your son issue a lot god yes a lot you've been telling your people uh, pointing uh, your son to them a lot god thank you lord god even as we see all these things a lot god why it is done and what is the purpose of these things happening and how prepared we should be a lot god to to listen to that uh, uh, trumpet call a lot god even as we are waiting for your coming a lot god thank you lord god yes a lot we know that uh, we are in the wilderness state a lot god but the only thing a lot god we can hold on a lot to the fact a lot that you are there tabernacled with us a lot god you are, you are there to hear our needs a lot god thank you lord god that for living everything a lot god from the heaven and coming down to our level a lot god yes lord yes lord not on a higher pedestal a lot god but you are there in the field with us a lot god that is more comforting than anything else a lot god thank you lord god we praise you lord we thank you for your immense grace grace and mercy a lot god that we you have on each one of us a lot god thank you lord father in the name of your son yeshua i pray amen